In the last video, we talked about how to upload the King George components into our schematics program over here. And again, these components are a compilation of components made by Mr. Ross at GP Vanier and myself at King George Secondary. The very first step in making our custom circuit board is we need to create a schematic. And a schematic is essentially a fancy word for saying a recipe that someone can follow. And this recipe tells people a few things. It tells them what components to add to a recipe, What's the value of those components? So for example, is it a one volt battery? Is it a nine volt battery? Is it a thousand volt, volt battery? Who knows? And also what components are connected to what components? Fortunately for us, all the ingredients that we need to make our schematic are all in the King George components library folder. For the purposes of this activity, all I want you to do is follow along on the screen and copy me step by step. You know that you've done a good job when you have a replica or an exact copy of what I've done. So I'm going to walk you through step by step. First thing we're going to do is we're going to look down. We're going to find the component that says that's called LM386. So we're going to go ahead and click that. And this is the symbol for the LM386. This is the magic box that turns the waves from my iPod into glorious music outside my speaker. As you can see, I can place this anywhere on my screen. And what we're actually going to do is we're going to rotate this component. To rotate this component, you're going to type in R on the keyboard. So I'm going to press R. and You can see I flipped over my keyboard. I'm going to click R again. And then I'm going to click R again. And then that's good to place my component. Left click it. And now I have planted one LM386 on my screen. As you can see, my computer program will now want to put another LM386. That's what's stuck on my mouse. So to get rid of it, we can just go back and click default mode up on the top here. And then that brings me back to the regular cursor. If I accidentally placed a component that I didn't want, like, oh no, there's an LM386 that I don't want here. Go back up to the cursor mode right up here. Click it. Brings you back to the cursor. You can click that LM386 that you don't want and press delete. And then that makes it disappear. Next, we're going to add a resistor. So we're going to find the resistor, half watt, and I'm just going to place it right over here, left click to get rid of it. And then I'm going up to the cursor mode to free up my cursor. I'm going to then connect this point to this point here. And just like in real life, we're going to connect these two. We're going to use a wire. And the virtual wire is right up here. Click it. And go over to that little number one box. It will glow red. Left click. And then now I'm building a little wire. Connect this to the one on the R1. Left click when you're happy should look like this. Now unfortunately I'm still in wire mode so I'm gonna exit that by clicking the cursor. You, you know that two components are connected when you can click the component itself and if you move it around they remain connected. If you ever need to move stuff later on you can just left click that component and move it around. You can always rotate things. Okay, now we've added a resistor. We need to specify what value resistor it needs to be. So I'm going to click it. 
and you can see that there is a part box over here. Underneath value, you'll click the value and type in 10K for kilo ohms. Ohms being the unit of resistance. Then when you're done, just left click anywhere on the screen. The next component we're going to need is a non-polarized capacitor or non-polar cap. Click that and put it close to the resistor. Connect the two with the wires. So wire. And then to exit the wire mode, I'm going to click the cursor again. Now I'm going to specify the value of the capacitor. So I click C1 or the capacitor. Underneath value, double click and type in 33 NF, which stands for 33 nanofarads. Then click anywhere on the screen to lock it all in. Now our next step is to connect this part of the capacitor, the C1, to the 5 over here on the output. In my experience, because I've done the schematic before, I'm actually going to take the wire and I'm going to go down underneath this component and out through here. I'm going to show you how to do that. Click the wire, click the two, bring it down here, left click. And what I've done is now that corner is locked in. I'm going to go through the LM386. I'm going to click it again. I'm going to go through the LM86. Left click again. Come down close to the 5. Left click it again. And then I've clicked the 5 there. Now this kink over here is no big deal. Your circuit will still work. But this kind of bothers me. So I'm going to click the cursor. And I'm just going to click down on this point and I can straighten that out a little bit. Go back, click your cursor. Our next step is we're going to find a battery. Next, I'm going to take the battery. And then I'm going to rotate it. So press R, 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 and then place it somewhere over here. Click the cursor to get rid of the battery mode. And you know you've done a good job when the negative is facing up. I'm going to go ahead, create a little wire. Click 2 for the wire. Connect 2 to the negative. Next, I'm going to add a resistor. And I'm just going to plop a resistor right up here, click it, change the value to 100 ohms, so 100 ohms, and then click anywhere on the screen. Then find the component that's called audio input. And I'm just going to go ahead and plop an audio input over here. Again, click the cursor. Next, I'm going to connect three, this pin here, to the second point on this resistor. So wire, click, click. The other end of the resistor is going to go to the negative part of the battery. So click this, connect one, the negative part of the battery, and you know you've done a good job when there's a little dot there. That dot means that the one is connected to the negative part of the battery. Next, connect the two on the audio pin to the three on the LM386. So click the wire, two to three. Again, there's that dot. 
Next, connect four on the LM386 to the negative part of the battery or the two. So click this, four. Now, I don't like how these wires are crisscrossing, so I'm going to left click here just to kind of lock that wire in place and connect it to two. So let's zoom out. And this is what you should have so far. Feel free to pause the video to make sure that your screen looks like my screen. We're going to spec we're gonna next we're gonna click the battery to specify what the battery value is. Click the value and type in nine volts. There we go. Now that we've done the top part, we're gonna go do the bottom part. I've got some good news for you. Nothing is connected to the eight pin, so we're just gonna let that chill out. I've also, there's nothing connected to the seven pin, so we're just gonna leave that blank. Our next step is to connect six to the positive part of the battery. Now I know that there's gonna be a lot of stuff that's gonna be here, so I'm just gonna create a lot of space. So click the wire, click six, bring it all the way down, and then click it to lock it in place, and bring it back to the positive part of the battery like such. Our next step is to get a polarized capacitor or polarized cap, click it. And here's our cap over here or our capacitor. We're gonna press R to rotate, R to rotate again, and place it over here. Left click. You know that you have done a good job when the positive part of the capacitor is facing the right of your screen. Again, we gotta, again, we gotta specify the value of the capacitor, so click it. And we're gonna change the value, double click, and type in 100 UF and hit enter. 100 UF is 100 microfarads. Then we're gonna connect this line to here. And then we're gonna connect this part here, the two, all the way to the negative line. And so this whole line up here has become a negative line. So I'll go left, click it here, left click to plant and all the way up like this. The next, the next thing I'm going to add is a resistor. So click the resistor and we'll just, and we'll just put it right underneath here. We're going to change that value. We're going to change that value to 10 ohms. Find a non-polarized capacitor or non-polar cap, click that, place it next door, left click, and that value is 47 NF, or 47 nanofarads. Click that. And now we're going to click our wire. We are going to connect five, to two, we're then going to connect the one to the two over here, like this. And then we're going to connect the one over here all the way to the negative part of the battery again up here. So I'll click this, left click to place it, and place another wire up there. Now things are getting a little bit busy up here, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna left click the battery, and I'm just gonna shift it out a bit. And then I'm gonna take this wire over here, move it a little bit to the left. Take this wire over here, move it out a little bit to the left, so that we have some room over here. Next, we're going to grab 
a polarized capacitor, so polarized cap, click it. We're going to rotate, so press R, press R again. You know you've done a good job when the positive part, or the plus sign, is facing the right of your screen. We're going to specify the value, so that's 470 UF, and we're going to connect this wire here down to the 5, like such. Our last component is the speaker, so we'll click Speaker. We're going to press R for Rotate, R to Rotate, and we're just going to place it next to the capacitor. You know you've done a good job when the plus side is facing down. Connect this part, connect the one of the speaker to the two of this capacitor. So click the wire, click, click. And finally, click the wire and connect the two up to this line here. So click, left click, left click, and up. Now as I'm looking back here, I realized I forgot something. I'm going to go back, click the wire, and I'm going to connect the ground or the three on the audio input to this wire down here. At this point, pause the video, look at my screen. Your schematic should look exactly like mine. If yours looks exactly like mine, congratulations, you're finished. You've, create, you've created a working schematic of a monobox. The last step is to put your name on it. So left click the ABC up here and left click anywhere on the screen. Left click on the screen, you will start to see a little flashing symbol. This is where you can start to type. So just give the name of the project, Monobox Circuit, and put your name on it, Mr. Ow. At this point, this is probably the most important step. You should probably save your schematic. So click Save. For the name, just type in your last name and write monobox. Click Save. Congratulations, you're done the first activity. Now upload it in Teams. Finally, to hand in your schematic, go to your class with me on Microsoft Teams, click Assignments, find the assignment, draw a monobox circuit, and under here is the option to add work. Go ahead and click that. Under here, there's upload from this device. Go ahead and click it. Go to your desktop and find your assignment. Here it is, our mono box. Click it, click open. Then you know, let it, let it attach itself and then click done. There it is. And then click turn in. You know you're done when you get some cool animation like this.